Hey guys, Joe Pye here with a midweek quickie. I'm going to show you a little part of this uh, miniature milling machine that I'm building that has a rather interesting feature called out on the end that has really no dimensions. It's just a physical representation of what they want to see at the end and it's purely cosmetic and if you do this you could probably do it with a file but being the anal retentive Virgo New Jersey toolmaker that I am, how many other things you want to throw on that resume, right? Uh, I had to do it in CAD, I modeled it up, I made it, constrained it, and, and got it to a point where all my dimensions are symmetrical, about a center line, making the rotary table work a whole lot easier. So I'm gonna show you the drawing they gave me, I'll show you the drawings I created, the model, and then I'll show you the little problem that you can encounter, and you probably have encountered it if you made this part. This is a very small part, a very delicate part to hold, and I've actually had a comment in one of the previous videos where one of the guys said, I'm curious how you're going to do this. Well, <laughs> me too. All right, let's get over to the desk, take a look at the plans, and away we go. And no, I'm not standing outside in some beautiful rainforest. This is actually my wall mural in my office. So I thought I'd mix up a little bit. Big yeah, let's take a look. This is the part in question. It is the T-slot link, item number 17. This is a very delicate part. This is only a millimeter and a half across here and across here. And this is a very small 080 T-nut. Uh, this attaches to the front of the table and controls the feed clutch, I believe. This moves back and forth on a feed rod. Now, it's this little keyhole thing on the end here that is really not called out. There's a bunch of other dimensions on there which are important to have. But the configuration here is just not shown anywhere. There's no angular references. There's no... There's nothing. So realistically, if you connect the top two points and make it tangent to the circle, you can move this around and have it wherever you want it, so long as all the other hard features are there. Of course, I have to model this up, and let's take a look at the model. Uh, actually, let's take a look at the prints that I made first. There you go. Autofocus is a beautiful thing. This is the rotary table print. I'm going to be starting with a 375 square block. And I just nickled the, knuckled the bone. Knuckled the bone. Sounds like a stripper, right? Knuckle the bone. 375 square stock. I'm going to rotate the stock in a rotary table for my zero position. Profile the outside just to a very superficial depth. And then I'm going to establish the square up here with a slitting saw of all things and so this end will be completed initially 35 degrees 525 35.525 degrees which translates to 35 degrees 31 minutes 30 seconds okay placement of the holes the part will be done end to end you cannot access uh, i guess you could access both holes at the same time but i'm going to flip the part and I've got the holes referenced from the raw material and referenced to each other per print. The part itself looks like this when you're done. Not a very involved part, but when you get down to it, there's not a whole lot of meat left to hold on to. All the dimensions from the print are on this drawing, and I like to over-dimension everything. Not over constrain it, just over dimension it. So I know if I want to go from this surface down, I know that, would, bah, 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 you know what I'm saying. Anyway, let's take a look at the problem you may have with this feature right here and why it exists. This is what the part looks like when you're done. It sits on the machine with this forward face facing you. And this guy is on the right-hand crank on the side, so as it moves back and forth, it engages and disengages the clutch. This feature on the end, I believe that they wanted this differently, but this is the way I decided to do it. I'm going to the outside corner, so it's a nice, clean transition down here. And it's going to look good and function as well. So this thing on the end, this was the, okay, well, what the heck are they talking about feature? And if I want to get back into how that was actually created, I will edit the definition on that. Edit the internal sketch, and away we go. The feature on the end is constrained such that the two sides are parallel to each other. And a center line struck across the cord of the end feature is true to a center line. A 
there. It's the same distance from the center to here and from the center to here. So it's going to make a whole lot of sense when it comes time to flip this thing vertically and work around the same coordinates. We're going to erase these little geometric things here are called constraints. And this one means parallel to. This one means parallel to something. And once everything is called out, you can say, I want this parallel to that or square to that or perpendicular. This is a perpendicular call out. And this is a symmetric call out down here. I'm going to get rid of those for a second. Try. There it is. Delete that. Boop. Now we should be able to move that around. Let's delete this too. Delete. All right. And now just get rid of all of them. Throw them all out the window. Now it's anybody's guess. This is pretty much what they've dealt you on the plants. So watch this. <laughs> Actually, don't watch this. Oh, it's coming. Hang on a second. I'll find it. Killing me. There you go. The diameter on the bottom is called out, so that's got to stay locked in. But let's see if we can. There you go. You can change where the lines hit and still maintain the diameter on the bottom. This is called as a 156. Let's lock that in. And turn it orange, and it's locked. It's not going to change. Now, these guys here, they could be anywhere. I'm going to make them parallel to each other, and watch how this thing jumps around down here. This is, to me, it's interesting, but what can you say, right? Parallel. I want this parallel to that. Now it's parallel. The beauty of CAD. There's those little constraints again. No more constraints, but I can move these, and this should give us a whole different perspective on what's going on. All right, see the tilt? Now it's turning into a musical note. Ba -da, now it's a B. It's off center. There's only one place in space where this center line is going to be perpendicular here, and everything is going to fall in. So if you're making this, and you want it tangent on the outside like that, that's perfectly fine. You want a tangent on the out other side like that, that's perfectly fine too. Offset, little bump, whatever. Anyhow, that is the problem with this part. And like I said, if you're making this part, well, you're going to run into that. So leave me a comment and say, hey man, I need your drawings. I can do that for you if you want. Anyway, you're going to have to come back and see how this is actually done on the mill because that should be the video coming up here in a couple days. Thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate you watching these shorties. It does help. Subscribe, thumbs up, hit the Patreon page, show us some support over there. Every dollar counts. Thank you very much, guys, wherever you are in the world. Hope you're well, happy, and safe. All the above, Joel Pye, Dance Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.